Broadcasting life and truth around the world. You're listening to the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Hank Hanegraaff, president of the Christian Research Institute. The mission of CRI and the Bible Answer Man broadcast is to teach discernment and to defend the essential doctrines of the historic Christian faith. Each day, Hank answers questions with a passion for apologetics, biblical literacy, and countering the cults. For more information about CRI, call 888-7000-CRI or visit our website at equip.org. That's equip.org. The following program was pre-recorded. To begin today's Bible Answer Man broadcast, here's your host, Hank Hanegraaff. And a reminder that you can also contact us via the mail at Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. Well, I always tell my staff, never give me a copy of Charisma magazine because it always sends me into orbit. Unfortunately, Today I found a copy of Charisma magazine in my inbox, and there's this compelling picture of Jonathan Kahn. He's on the cover. He's sort of gazing into the future with this far away mystic look, and you can tell by the subhead to the cover story that he has been holding back, but he has finally decided that he is going to reveal what God has revealed to him. He, of course, is now a favorite sensationalistic author in the evangelical Christian world, in fact, far beyond the evangelical Christian world. And he claims that there is a mystery that he is going to reveal. And he's going to be able to do that through his prophetic powers. He's going to be able to unlock for you and me, well, the mystery behind major world events, particularly those that are of interest to his audience, major world events that pretend to tell us the future of the United States of America. Well, when you start saying things like that, and you've built up a worldwide audience, people immediately begin to listen. Because he's claiming that he has uncovered all kinds of mysteries. Mysteries that the Bible reveals if you can only see the correlation that he sees between world events and those things that are communicated in Scripture. And of course, he alone has figured out the mystery. He alone knows the pattern. And his claim is that these events that he's been given insight into actually pretend modern divine judgments. So just as there were judgments in the past, there are going to be future judgments, calamitous events that happened in ancient Israel's history were divine judgments for sin, and they will be for America as well. So the first thing that we ought to note when we read these kinds of things is that Jonathan Kahn is a master at selling fear. All we have to do is think back to Y2K, when selling fear was hugely profitable for megachurch pastors. Of course, bankrupted many parishioners. But here we go again. The real tragedy is not that men like Jonathan Kahn are using current events as the pretext for selling fear. They've been promoting fear, engendering conspiracy theories for, well, for years. The real tragedy is that their messages and their manuscripts are now being promoted by mainstream ministers and ministries. Jonathan Kahn, in other words, has become a master at mining the subjunctive, at cultivating the seed of threat buried inside each unrealized instance, and 
what he is doing is now being promoted within the body of Christ. But really what he's doing is he's selling fear. And he's also making sensationalistic claims. He's making the claim that much that will be revealed in his book has never before been revealed. In other words, he's doing something that's never been done in written form in the history of the world. He says, there exists an ancient mystery that holds the secret of America's future. And that this mystery lies behind everything from 9-11 to the collapse of the global economy. Not only to that, but to COVID-19 and massive urban unrest. Has he got your attention yet? (laughs) He probably does. Because he goes on to say that he alone has been given the supernatural ability to unravel the pattern of all of these mysteries. So here you have selling fear, you have sensationalistic claims, and you also have sloppy journalism. Sloppy journalism that has been allowed to run wild. Jonathan Kahn, he employs what has been aptly described in the Christian Research Journal as an agenda of generous conceptual expansion to facilitate what appears to be uncanny matches. In other words, he's taken a concept, perhaps a biblical concept, and he's made Well, a correlation between that alleged concept in Scripture and an uncanny match in modern-day America. These are harbingers, according to Jonathan Kahn. And these harbingers manifested in ancient Israel in the nation's last days, and so they correlate to what's happening once again in America. And according to to the precise pattern of ancient Israel. In other words, there's a pattern in the Bible, happened to ancient Israel, he's discerned the pattern, and that pattern is taking place all over again in America. For example, Jonathan Kahn considers America's construction of the Freedom Tower at Ground Zero a defiant act on the part of America, very much like... Israel's defiance of the judgment of God. So actually, what was in reality a defiant response to the ideology of Islamic terrorists is now supposedly a defiance on a part of America. And that's going to be judged. And all of this, in Khan's worldview, or in his sensationalism, In his sloppy journalism, all of this stems back to Isaiah 9.10. You know, the verse that says, The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with smooth stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will replace them. We will replace them with cedars. And so Khan claims that the defiant cutting down of sycamores... And the planting of cedars in ancient Israel find a direct parallel in 9-11. And in evidence, he bloviates that the collapse of the World Trade Center resulted in the destruction of a single sycamore tree, which America then replaced by a cedar tree, a tree of hope. The tree felled in New York was, Con admits, not... Not the Middle Eastern sycamore of the Bible, it was an English sycamore, but don't worry about details. And likewise, the Tree of Hope, well, was not really a cedar. It was a Norwegian spruce. But again, let's not worry about the details. Kahn employs selling, sensationalism, sloppy journalism, And I suppose the tragedy is that 
so many within the body of Christ are buying into his sophistry. I'm going to talk about that when we come back from the break. Because the real problem is not that there are people dispensing false narratives within the body of Christ. The real problem is the body of Christ is buying into those false narratives because they don't know how to discern the real signs of the times. They don't know how to read the Bible for all its substantial worth. The misuse of Scripture is a tragedy in our generation. And unfortunately, now the tragedy is taking center stage in ministries and magazines, manuscripts, and America is being duped. So is the world. I'll be right back with more. Stay tuned. Although Christians are inheritors of true, glorious, literal immortality, often they take little comfort in it. Why? Few Christians have a robust view of the glory that awaits them forever. Clay Jones wrote Immortal to remind Christians to keep their focus on forever. To receive your copy of Immortal, How the Fear of Death Drives Us and What We Can Do About It, call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches. 888-7000-CRI or visit us at equip.org. We'll be back in just a moment with more from Hank Hanegraaff. The Christian Research Journal is CRI's award-winning magazine, combining eye-catching design with well-researched articles, equipping you to exercise truth and experience life. Here's what's in the latest issue of the Christian Research Journal. The second century theological warrior Irenaeus stands among the most relevant thinkers for our own time. His reliance on the church's apostolic canon, creed, and clergy shows us a way beyond the interpretive anarchy of today's individualist approach to Christianity. Other topics include the word crisis that threatens to undo Western civilization, faithful living through COVID-19, winning the fight for religious freedom, the beauty of worship, aesthetics, and truth, vocation and performance in T.S. Eliot's The Confidential Clerk, atheism and the burden of proof, and much more. Start your subscription to the Christian Research Journal today by calling 888-7000-CRI, 888-7000-CRI, or subscribe online at equip.org. That's equip.org. Dr. Eben Alexander's wildly popular near-death experience book, Proof of Heaven, assures us that no matter what we do in this life, only unconditional love and joy await us in the world to come. But our Lord warned that while the gate to hell is wide, the road to it broad, and those who enter through it are many, the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Your generous support lets Hank Hanegraaff and CRI speak out against the lies that lead to hell. In appreciation for your gift today, we'll rush you Hank's book, Afterlife, what you need to know about heaven, the hereafter, and near-death experiences, filled with answers to your questions about life after death. Call 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org now. Again, that's equip.org. In recent years, fewer Americans pray, trust in God, believe in the Bible, or attend church. But paradoxically, Americans have become more likely to believe in an afterlife. One explanation is the rise in entitlement, expecting special privileges without effort. Tell a generation they are good, unrelated to their behavior or performance, and they will think they should be able to live forever, regardless of how they act or believe. Clay Jones wrote Immortal to explain the truth that we will live forever, but our destination is determined by our relationship with Christ and in Him how we live our lives. To receive your copy of Immortal, How the Fear of Death Drives Us and What We Can Do About It, call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit us at equip.org. Oh, 
Let's return to your host, Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you very much, Randy. Today's show was precipitated in part by reading an article in Charisma magazine and seeing a headline, the sensationalism, the sloppy journalism, the selling of fear got to me to the point of devoting this special broadcast to the subject. Before the break, I said I'd mentioned something about sophistry. Sophistry might best be defined as subtly deceptive reasoning. At first blush, the arguments appear to be airtight, but on closer examination, you see all kinds of flaws. And of course, Jonathan Kahn has turned sophistry into a virtual art form, and he's not alone. I could mention many of their names, like John Hagee or Pat Robertson. So many of them have turned sophistry into an art form. An apt illustration concerns the Mosaic Law of Shemitah. Every seven years was a Sabbath year, a year of rest, a year of remission of debts. Well, Khan holds America accountable to the Law of Shemitah and says America is being judged because it has not kept an ancient theocratic mosaic law that has been abrogated as a result of the coming of Christ. He's holding us to something that has been fulfilled. That in itself is a huge, huge problem that needs to be repented of. According to Kahn, if the mystery of Shemitah is still in effect, we might expect that there exists a connection between a Hebrew month and a collapse in the financial realm. Like the stock market crash of 2008. But as should be obvious to any thinking person, if they really think about this, drops in the stock market do not constitute a Shemitah canceling of debts. This is a category mistake, and obviously that. The sophistry of Khan's entire scheme is based on the myth that America is the new Israel. He says that the founding fathers consecrated America as the new Israel. That again is sophistry, and a little investigation is enough to unmask this sophistry. So don't just buy into these paradigms. Think about them critically. And since America is not the new Israel, Khan's entire project of revealing supposed mysteries that only he can reveal, well, it fails. And Khan is shown to be a false prophet, one who is making it up as he goes along and the gullible are buying into it. Even people like Glenn Beck and a host of other big names. Well, sophistry is not the only thing I want to mention. I also want to mention script torture. The scripture twisting tactics of Jonathan Kahn have become so pervasive that I feel compelled in this broadcast to re-invoke a term I coined during the Y2K fiasco. I coined the term script torture. And Khan's distortion of scripture to buttress his four blood moons nonsense is a classic case in point. So on the current issue of Chrisma magazine that started this whole thing in my mind, one of Khan's nine original herbingers was an Aretz tree. It appears in Isaiah 9.10 as the cedar that ancient Israel vowed to plant as a sign, a sign of their intent to come back stronger in defiance of God. I mentioned this in the first part of the broadcast today. Well, Kahn says, two years after 9-11, the Eretz tree manifested in America with the planting of what was called the Tree of Hope at the corner of Ground Zero. It was a symbol, he says, of America rising up stronger than before. But what happened to the tree that was planted at Ground Zero, says Kahn, is that the Tree of Hope began to wither away 
And no matter what they tried to do to save it, he says, it kept withering away. The symbol of America withering away. And finally, the tree, well, it was struck down. It fell on a Hebrew holy day, on Passover, at the time, he says, that the moon turned blood red. And thus the harbinger was struck down and the Eretz tree fell. And this is a biblical sign of the judgment and fall of a nation. Well, if he's got your attention, if he hasn't, I'd be surprised. I've already commented on the tree of hope, but notice the allusion to the blood moons. A blood moon is a lunar eclipse that occurs when the earth is interposed between the moon and the sun, which casts Earth's shadow onto the moon's surface. It's called a blood moon because the shadow of total lunar eclipse has this reddish tinge. And so Khan falsely prophesies that a coming four moon sequence portended a catastrophe for nations, particularly a nation that he has in mind, the nation of Israel. This was his prophecy. Well, in reality, the tetrad of blood moons came and went without his prophesied Israeli catastrophe. In point of fact, there's no biblical basis whatsoever supporting a modern prophecy pundit predicting catastrophe on the basis of blood moons. Khan, well, he's simply making it up as he goes along. He's employing magic apologetics, not real apologetics. And even such language as the moon will be turned to blood is obviously judgment language. It pertains to the destruction of ancient cities and civilizations, not the actual celestial events. And if you don't believe that, read Isaiah 13, just one classic case in point. You have to torture scripture in order to come up with blood moons as literal stellar events. And what is really telling is that no tetrad is associated with any of the most significant datable events in Israel's history. Has nothing whatsoever to do with the Exodus, the Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the birth or death of Christ, the destruction of Jerusalem and the Second Temple, the Holocaust, you name it. My point in this broadcast is that as we head into the future, I have a deep desire, a desire that those who have made life decisions based on sloppy journalism, based on sensationalism, based on sophistry, based on, well, script torture, will once again commit themselves to developing the necessary skills to discern wheat from chaff and heat from light. And if we do that, the next time we face the selling, the subjectivism of Christian sensationalists like Jonathan Kahn, and we most certainly will, Christians will be unified around truth rather than Divided by error. Jonathan Kahn and Kevin Jessup, they're calling the nation to repentance and reconciliation and restoration and revival and reformation, and all of that is good. But unfortunately, it is all built on a faulty foundation. It's all built on sloppy journalism on sensationalism, on sophistry, on torturing scripture rather than reading the sacred scriptures for all their substantial worth. I don't take pleasure in issuing a warning. But if you want to use the Old Testament, Jeremiah will do. Do not listen to what The prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. And there lies the problem. And you, dear Christian, need 
to know the truth. Because the world is now looking at us and seeing how easily we followed, well, the skin of the truth stuffed with a great big lie, which is precisely what the devotees of the harbingers designated by Jonathan Kahn are doing. I'm out of time for this edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast as always Monday through Friday at this time. Your questions answered when you dial triple eight ask Hank. And do remember that I'm doing a series and we'll be promoting this in the future on the end times and really on how you can read the Bible rightly with respect to end times so that you don't fall for schemes. Look forward to seeing you next time for more of the show. Thank you for listening to the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Hank Hanegraaff. Too often we concentrate on the short time we have on earth and ignore the reality that we're going to live forever. Clay Jones wrote the monumental book, Immortal, to ensure that you enjoy a life free from fear of death and focused on forever. To receive your copy of Immortal, How the Fear of Death Drives Us and What We Can Do About It, simply call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit us at equip.org. You can also write CRI at Post Office Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28271. The preceding program was pre-recorded. The Bible Answer Man broadcast is funded solely by listeners like you. We're on the air because truth matters and life matters more. The Christian Research Journal is CRI's award-winning magazine, combining eye-catching design with well-researched articles, equipping you to exercise truth and experience life. Here's what's in the latest issue of the Christian Research Journal. The question, what do you mean by that, may be the most important question one could ask today. In this relativistic post-truth age in which words are systemically redefined to undermine the Judeo-Christian foundations of Western civilization, Christians must discern the meaning of words and learn to counter and redeem semantic distortions. Other topics include faithful living through COVID-19, Irenaeus and Christian teaching, winning the fight for religious freedom, vocation and performance in T.S. Eliot's The Confidential Clerk, the beauty of worship, aesthetics and truth, and much more. Start your subscription to the Christian Research Journal today by calling 888-7000-CRI, 888-7000-CRI, or subscribe online at equip.org. That's equip.org.